Hello, this is Mr. Bacon Bits, and welcome to Tiny Bunny. This is a free game on Steam. Uh, there is only one episode out right now, but this is extremely highly rated. Um, let's just dive right in, shall we? This is a visual novel game which I've been doing a lot of lately. And, uh, yeah. I went ahead and did my settings and stuff. New game. Oh, and this is... This apparently is a, uh... choose-your-own-adventure kind of thing. The story changes depending on your choices, so... The wind clawed at my window all night long. It wandered the fields and howled like, an, like a hungry beast. An endless song weaved from all sorts of voices, shrill, gentle, sneery, twined in the air. They were shouting and laughing, and arguing about something. Someone was running through the snow while casting long shadows that would occasionally creep close to my bed. Our house had a mind of its own. The creaky old mind of a building that had seen a lot in its days, and was seemingly trying to share its wisdom with the inhabitants. The lonely house faced the forest, and the dark green thicket gazed back with its hollow eyes, rustling, whizzing, swaying back and forth. One could come out and stand at the edge of the forest to reassure themselves there was nobody behind the crooked trees. Fuzzy silhouettes swaying in the wind couldn't possibly do any harm. It's just a play of light and shadow. Just a play. I knew it was my imagination. I was already twelve, after all. Kind of a deep voice for a twelve-year-old. Still. I see a fox. Hey, put away your book. How many times have I told you not to raid at the table? It's bad for your health. Look at how slouched you are. Oh, I can do something. Can I choose anything? Uh, oh, I guess just hide it. All right. I didn't protest and put the book about Conan the Barbarian aside. I was stuck on a line I couldn't understand after reading it three times anyway. Olya had already finished her breakfast and was munching on some cookies. She was so enthusiastic she almost looked like your typical girl from commercials. You're not going anywhere until you finish all of it. I, on the other hand, was still trying to drill a hole in the plate with my eyes, as if it would make the porridge disappear. Hazy anxiousness welled up inside, all because of the previous sleepless night, the black forest around our house, and the gloomy wind. The longer I waited, the colder the lumpy white substance became. It looked like a jellyfish from the Custaw Odyssey. I love that show. I wonder how horrifying the bottom of the ocean is. Or how cold the black forest is at night. The spoon fell out of my hand. Mom showered me with a cold glare from her green eyes. What did I just say? I'll get it. I had ten seconds to catch my breath before battling the nasty porridge once again. I felt around for the spoon. What is this carved on the other side of the table? Karina. You can sp you can read that? Hey, that's ha! Huh, that's my mom's mo mom's name. I guess she carved it out with something pointy when she was little. She sure was a rascal, damaging the furniture like that. She would scold me for a week if I did something similar, though. Should I remind her about it? No, she's been, a, been, a, been in a bit of a bad mood lately. I imagined her being my age, sitting under this table. I wonder, was Mom afraid of the dark back then? Or the sounds coming from the attic? Or the thick forest? I imagined my grandma coming into my mo little mom's room, sitting at the edge of her bed, where Olya sleeps nowadays and saying this in her soft, smooth voice. Taiga is a special place, little girl. 
It's watching you closely, sniffing you out, trying to discern what kind of beast you are. If you're a good sort, it won't abandon you in times of trouble. But if you're a bad apple, it'll grab you by the side and drag you under the ground. And that would be it. Grandma was caring. She never fought with anybody, never yelled, never swore. Those were the times without the maddening screams until late at night, without smashed dishes and mutual accusations. Our parents used to love each other back then. I, rem I remember listening in on one of their conversations by chance. They were talking about Grandma getting prepared for her funeral. She had already bought a casket. And she called it her cute funeral box. It waited for its time in the closet, patiently. It was black, upholstered with meat-colored material in the, on the inside. Meat is a strange color you would choose. I mean... I get it. It's actually a popular color, but meat is not the word I would choose. I saw it when my grandma was getting buried. The house didn't change since the time she was alive. Only all of the photos were gone. Glass-covered pictures with gray faces of my ancestors. They all had a dead but watchful look in their eyes. I crawled out from under the table. Olya was done with her cookies, and was looking at my share like a sly woodland creature. I turned my gaze toward the frosted window. There were a lot of dark pines outside, but they didn't grab my attention. The pattern of frost formed a picture on the glass. Olya, look, it's a fox! Where? It looked almost like those optical illusion thingies they put on the back of student notebooks. A mixture of lines at first glance, but if you blur your vision a little bit, and look under a certain angle... Not outside, on the window! Look, here's the noise, nose, noise, and here's... Hey, eat up! Yes, yes, just a moment. I don't see anything. Hur hurry up, there's not much left. Ah, there it is! But it still doesn't look like one. And I'm telling you, it does. Nuh-uh! It does! Stop it! Ugh, these kids, I swear. Now I couldn't see the fox either. It disappeared. Went away. Only the frosty patterns, similar to stretched out nettle leaves, kept creeping up the glass. My dad entered the kitchen with long, measured steps. I want to have a beard like his when I grow up. Mom would always ask jokingly, Come on, shave it off, it stings. This was so long ago. Nowadays, rumbling doors and witty comebacks were an everyday occurrence. Olya always covers her ears whenever she hears something like, What's the point in all this? through the wall. It's all for your sake, Dad would reply, for the sake of our family. I always caught every sound in fear of hearing the most dreaded, the deadliest word that started with a D. Yeah. D-I-V-O. I don't even want to finish it. It was scary to imagine that me and my little sister could be torn apart and taken into two different families. Anyway, your fox is nothing. I have an owl on my window. You and your- you and your owl talk again. You said you believed me just yesterday. Has anybody seen my car keys? I remember leaving them on the windowsill. Right. Maybe you did, maybe not. You're a grown man, a father of two, and still... Karina, please stop. Just let me get ready in peace. Your keys are in the basket near the phone. Well, thank you very much. Anton, stop making a martyr out of yourself and finish eating already. And the owl... There was no owl. But there was one! It had giant glowing eyes! Olya sprung from the chair and placed her hands on her little face, imitating a pair of eyes with her fingers, the size of an apple each. Last year you had bub eye in your closet, now this owl? Well, I guess I can't click on that. But I saw it! Olya shifted her gaze back and forth from dad to mom to me, but couldn't find any support. Have you thought about befriending it? You know, like feeding it with imaginary mice? Don't bully our girl. She's just afraid to sleep alone because she's still little. 
Olya pouted her lips in rebellion and rushed into the hallway. The staircase that led to the second floor creaked. Mom gave Dad a, d a strict look. Oh, that look in her eyes. It's so uncomfortable but to be pinned under it. Dad just snorted in reply and left, ringing with the keys he just found. A minute had passed, and the theme song from The Little Mermaid echoed through the house. It was stored on incredibly worn-out cassette tape, which Dad already had to glue together once. It's so easy to fix objects, by gluing them back together, for example. But how do you fix a relationship? Very compelling statement from a child. Twelve-year-old. Mom moved to the living room, and I was left alone, anxiously stealing glances at the window. Olya had trouble sleeping ever since we moved to this house. She would toss and turn or curl up into a ball under her blanket. Sometimes she would jump up in the middle of the night and turn on the VCR. Cartoons helped to take her mind off of all the troubles that we had with the move and our parents. Ooh, that's creepy. And then Olya said she saw that giant flying monster outside her window. She became obsessed with it. Our parents did everything in their power. They tried every little trick to get rid of those ridiculous fears. Olya refused to sleep alone and didn't believe that the owl was just one of her nightmares. After tonight, was I was unsure what to make of my sister's words, what to think of it myself. Can nightmares be infectious? Just last night, I couldn't get a wink of sleep and ended up thinking of what to expect in my new school. There were a couple of days left before the beginning of a new term. My imagination drew long, twisting hallways that led to a classroom full of kids. But all the students behind their desks were simply dark figures, cut out using a template. Circular holes gaped in the middle of their faces, and pairs of eyes blinked inside those holes. It was as if some completely different creatures were looking at me from behind that fl the flat black silhouettes. Their cruel glares, filled with icy sneers, made me shiver from head to toe. Will I survive here? Won't they gang up on me and beat me down? Stomp on me with their bloodied shoes? The damn school can burn for all I care. I just wished for anything to happen to it. It doesn't really matter what. I didn't want to go there ba that badly. I didn't want to see people who are just itching to smack me on the head, trip me up, think of a new offensive name for me, worse than the previous one. I felt like the glasses I wore made me an outsider or some sort of monster. My gaze slid across the drawings hanging on the walls. I couldn't consider myself a great artist, but Olya begged me to hang them. Drawing was the only thing that made me happy as of late. The small circle of friends I had also enjoyed my paintings, and they promised to call me from time to time. Sometimes I imagined Mom picking up the phone and saying in a cold voice, You've got the wrong number. Dot or Anton is not around. Anton is not around. I imagined my future classmates lying in their beds, just like me, listening to the howls of invisible werewolves outside their windows. I'm loving the the atmospheric m music in the background, like, wow. Maybe my new classmates will like me after all. But who would ever like a boy with thick glasses? <clears throat> I mean, my dad used to wear glasses when he was little. And now he's married to the most beautiful woman on the planet, my mom. The house creaked, pressed by the wind. The condo we used to live in, a nine-floor concrete building, buzzed with the neighbor's drill, mumbled with a TV set from behind the wall, cried like a baby from the big family next door. Our current house, though I can't really call it new, was completely different. It was silent and easygoing during the day. Its shadows lay dormant in the corners, on the closet cobwebs, and under the stairs. But they all woke up during the night. Something was watching me from every corner, almost as if the old photos of my diseased family, with their ashen eyes, were hanging on the walls in place of my drawings. The floor was squeaking, rusty drains were moaning, the attic was occupied by noisy drafts. One could think the house was performing some kind of demonic melody. And then I realized I was, in fact, hearing music. It was already playing for a good while. 
Somewhere at the edge of my perception, I could hear a flute. And it just kicked in. Wow! It was mixed in with the sound of the wind, of the creaking old house, and my thoughts, too. I stood up and rushed to the window. I wanted to reassure myself that this music was nothing more than a product of my imagination. It's not like someone is playing it there amidst the cold, snowy night, right? Okay. Open. Yeah. Someone was dancing in the field. Black silhouettes I could barely make out, with the dark forest as their backdrop. They jumped around, basked in moonlight, bumped into piles of snow, rolled around and crawled on all fours. Stories about wolves playing under the moon came to mind, but these were clearly not wolves. They stood upright at times, circled around holding hands and whipping up snow, disappearing into the shadows for a brief moment and then coming back. Something bizarre was going on. Shadows dancing in the starless abyss made my imagination go wild, making me anxious at the same time. Suddenly, the music had stopped. Okay. The dancing shadows froze in place and, I could swear, pierced me with their eyes. One of the silhouettes immediately parted from the bizarre shadow carnival and sprinted across the field with giant leaps. Ugh! That was fucking disturbing. It glided on squeak squeaky snow without leaving any prints until it was devoured by the pitch, black shadow of my house, which became even darker and thicker. My heart was jumping around like the bird inside a cage. I shut the curtains with a swift motion and stepped back toward the bed. They saw me! A freezing torrent of fear washed over me. I stood in the middle of a perfectly dark room and listened to some unwanted guest move and scrape around, looking for an entrance. The sound moved to the right, then circled around the house. Now my guest should be at the front door. I jumped into the bed and covered myself with a blanket, as if it could protect me. The shackles of fear locked my muscles. I remembered the funeral, my grandma lying there, hands across her crossed on her chest, her facial features sharp like that of a tin doll, ants running up and down the legs of chairs that held my grandma's casket. I imagined those little creatures climbing up her head and pulling up her eyelids with their tiny legs. Then her wrinkly eyeballs would once again move inside their sockets, and she'd be able to see her grandchildren. I was chanting the spell she taught me throughout the whole procedure, and now, lying under the blanket and listening to squeaks and howls, I was repeating the same words. On the island of Bullion, underneath the blemished sun, in the sea of color blue, stands a cabin made of wood. There lay lard and ash and hair, for the spawn from the devil's lair, to feast and always leave alone, God's faithful servant named Anton. Evil leave this house must, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Bizarre sounds had disappeared. I cautiously peeked out from under the blanket and saw curtains waving around like a hangman. And then the night doused me with a new portion of boiling terror. The sound scratched at my eardrums. In reality, something or someone were scratching at the front door, hurriedly clawing at wood, demanding to be let in. The door was shut. Dad had become very cautious recently, so he installed a sturdy lock. I remember him staring at the forest intently, as if he was looking for someone. Ashes to ashes! Dust to dust! I hugged my knees, placing my chin between them, and drilled the door with my eyes. It was so flimsy and weak before the might of darkness. And then... The doorknob twitched. Slightly. Then it turned halfway. Once twice, as if the person who tried to enter had no hands. The doorknob tilted once more, and then started clicking, violently. My jaw cramped from fear, my wet fingers clutched the blanket. The door creaked and opened. The wind taunted me, moaning inside the tin drains. Now, you'll see. The door was wide open. The darkness writhed inside the carnivorous mouth of the doorway. Tony... It was as if the night itself was calling out to me, flapping its black wings and squeaking with rusty hinges. I was trembling, 
ensnared by the web of darkness that hung in the corners of my room, waiting for the one who weaved it to come out of the gaping black hole. Tony. My abdomen tightened and my chest rose up, ready to exhale a desperate scream. But before I was able to do anything, the darkness asked me, Tony, you asleep? My sister's pale face protruded from the thick shadows. I almost screamed from relief. Olya? Uh, uh, I'm not sleeping. Did something happen? Olya frowned and stuck out her lower lip, a clear sign that she was about to cry. It's there again, staring at me. Shoo her away, Tony, please. I'm so scared. The fear that was tormenting me just a minute ago crawled away and hid somewhere in my stomach. I needed to calm Olya down. It was just a dream, silly. Don't be scared. Dreams don't bite. No one's going to harm you. Olya sobbed. She was trying her best to believe me. But was I sure myself? I have an idea. Let's go to your room and watch the video Sleeping Beauty, for example. You like that cartoon, don't you? Why does the Sleeping Beauty have a prince and I have this scary bird? That question took me by, by surprise. Alright, let's watch Cinderella. My thoughts became tangled, fuzzy. What was that? What studied me with its eyes while dancing feverishly under the moon? The darkness was clinging to the window, and it couldn't be fooled by Grandma's old chants. It couldn't be satisfied with a feast of lard and long ashen hair. Tony, you coming? Yes, yes, just a moment. 